Okay, so here we go. A formula B equals 27A is used in New England to estimate the minimum furnace output B in BTU <coughs> for modern house with the amount of square feet of floor... What's that say? It's off the screen, huh? Amount of square feet for flooring. Oh, it, I could shrink the help? No, you could, nothing works. Okay. Um, let me... So if I just scribbled on the screen, huh? All right, so anyway, so basically, you know, blah, 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 blah. You don't need to read all those words. Don't worry about all that stuff. All you need to do is take that little formula, B equals 27A, and they're saying um, 1,700, so just plug that in. That's all you need to do. You don't need to pay attention to all those words. It's not a... It's not like a real word problem where you really have to read them all and do something with them. Just plug that in. It's just a plug in. Um, plug in 1,700. You don't have to do anything with the square feet. It, all you need is the number. Don't worry about the square feet or any of that. Just simply plug in the number. Remember, whenever we plug into a formula, we put parentheses around the number we're plugging into the formula. So just plug that 1,700 in. Use your calculator or by hand. Well, I, don't, I can't do it by hand. Use your calculator. Somebody got that? What's 27 times? It's times, huh? 45,900. 45,900? 45, yeah. Thank you. 45,900. So that's the that's part A. Everybody good with that so far? That's just a plug-in. Now, part B is going to be a little more tricky. Part B, let me go back. Same formula again. We're going to start over again. Part B, same formula. Now, part B says solve the formula for A. So for that little A there. So they want me to actually solve that formula and get the little A alone. You know, you know how like the equal sign, the little A is saying, I want to be alone. Get rid of this 27 that's with me. I want to be alone, right? You're solving for whatever they told you to solve for. So how do I get rid of that 27 so the A can be alone? Minus. Yeah, how do I know if I minus the 27? Or I divide the 27. Divide. divide, huh? How do we know it's divide, not minus? It's times. It's times. It's right next to 27 there, right next to no symbol. If there was a plus in the middle, so then I would subtract, huh? But if there's nothing in the middle, there are times. The opposite of times is divide. And whenever we divide, do we divide by the same sign or the opposite sign? Same. Identical. Remember identical twin, I'm always saying? Whenever you divide, you divide by the identical twin. If that was a negative 27... I would divide by negative 27. I mean identical when you divide. When you add subtract, it's opposite sign, isn't it? Everybody with me on that? So these go away. A is alone. What's the other side? Well, it's just B over 27. That's just our answer. The answer is a formula. Does that make sense? So that's what's new in this section. Some of the answers are going to be formulas. They're going to still have letters in them. That's what's new in this last section, 2.4, that's on the test for Wednesday. So everybody good to there then on that part B? I just divide both sides by 27. The answer then is capital B. And by the way, Math Excel is picky on the uppercase, lowercase stuff. Yeah, yeah. So you've got to put the third <coughs> thing or they'll hassle you, right? They could waste hours of your life, and that's not what I want for you. So if you're ever unsure, remember, click question help, show me an example, go to the bottom, you'll see what they're saying. So capital B over 27. We got A alone. All right, let's try another one. Okay, so so the, the formula is M equals that's a one fifth T, yeah, one fifth T, and um, and then I'm just gonna grab that number. I mean, I just don't need all those words. Blah 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 blah. Seven, okay, put in the seven, huh? Does that make sense? It's just plug in the seven. You don't need to read all those words. So one fifth. Put our parentheses around anything we plug into a formula. You can, um, um, I think they say simplify. I don't think they want a decimal. Uh, I, they, I, they're not being very clear. How do you... 7.5. Um, how do you... What do you do when you got a fraction yeah. interacting with a whole number? Add a one under it. Yeah, put a one under it, huh? Like that? That good? And then you just multiply straight top, top, and bottom, bottom, huh? Yeah. One times seven, seven. Five times one, five. And that's just good right there. Seven fifths. It's okay that the top's bigger. We're fine with that. The only thing we need to do with fractions, if we could divide something out, we would, but you can't divide anything there. Two doesn't go into them or anything. You know. Is that good? Huh. All right. <coughs> Let's try.
Okay, so they're giving me the formula P over T, and they're saying 504 and 7. So 504 and 7. 7 is test, so that must be in the bottom, you know. So it's just plugging in those numbers, and then just divide them on your calculator. Somebody have that? What is 504 divided by 7? 72? Thank you. Good? That's all it is. Just plug in the numbers, hit the buttons on your calculator. Okay, so B equals HR. Now, this is where you got to notice what they're asking you to solve for. Solve for little h. Is that h? Yeah. So they can pick any of the letters to ask you to solve for. Now, whatever they ask you to solve for, that's the one that's saying, I want to be alone. That's the one that you've got to get alone. Right? So you've got to get that one alone. How do you get that little h alone? So h is here saying, I want to be alone. Here's the wall. Here's the equal sign. H is saying, I want to be alone. Get rid of it, whatever's with me. Am I going to subtract or divide? divide. Because it's multiplied, I divide. Huh. Yeah, divide. Divide by r. And whatever you do to one side, you have no choice but do the same thing to the other to keep the balance. Right? Those cancel. Capital B over r, that's our answer. Remember, when you type it in, capital B, little r. Right? It's case sensitive. Good so far. They're going to get more challenging. We good? Okay, so y equals x plus c. They say solve for x. Solve for x. So again, here's the wall. I think the, the my, whoops, I just did something crazy there. Bump the screen. Come on. There we go. All right, so. Um, here's the wall right there. X is saying, I want to be alone. Right? Solve for X. So what do I do to get X alone? Subtract. Subtract C. Because it's added. We always, we always do the opposite sign when we're adding subtracting, don't we? Same sign when we divide. Opposite sign when we add subtract. Huh? So opposite sign, you're right on. So what, now what do I do over here? What, what, what happens over here? Yeah, exactly. They, they can't really do anything but sit next to each other. They can't combine in any way. It's just Y minus C and we're done. Does the order matter? Could I put C minus Y? Yeah. <coughs> the order matters? Or I could put C minus Y? No, no. The order matters. The order in which you subtract, do you think? Think about numbers. Is 5 minus 1 the same as 1 minus 5? No, no. The, order of sub adding, the adding order never matters, but the order of subtraction matters, doesn't it? Well, how do you know what it is? The C is the minus got to be that way, not the other way, huh? We good? All right. Okay, so y equals 14 minus x. Solve for x. So here's the wall. X is saying, I want to be alone. So let me let you try that one. Go ahead. Get x alone. <coughs> x is saying, I want to be alone. Solve for x. 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 That's when, what you're thinking is when there's between two. So there's, that 14 was right up against the x, that would be between two. Right, so this is not 14 times x, is it? Right? It's not 14 times, because that 14 is not right up against x. If it was right up against x, that would be times, and I would divide. But it's not times, right? So anyway, long story short, x is saying, I want to be alone. And if you think about it, guys, there's two things to get rid of. We've got to get rid of that 14. And what else? That negative 1. That's, that negative sign is really a negative 1 right up against that x. Do you realize that? That's the trick on this one. There's both a 14. And what's the sign on the 14? Where do you find things, sign, numbers and letters? Where do you find their signs? Off to the left or off to the right? To the left. The 14 has nothing in front, which means positive. So, I want, so let me help you with that for a second. Here's one of the mistakes people make is they, they look at these symbols in the middle and they think of them as just kind of in the middle, but really they are on whomever they're in front of. So like that, these guys go together and those guys go together. See what I'm saying? That minus one or the minus sign, the minus one, is really on the X. He's not in the middle. I mean, I know he's kind of in the middle, but really, when push comes to sub and people start moving around, he's going with the X. That's his baby. He's not going to lose his baby, right? 
That's his. That minus 1 is on the x. Well, what's on the 14? Nothing's in front, so plus. So be clear about signs are in front of whoever they're on. That's there. The plus is on the 14. The minus 1 is on the x. Okay, with that in mind, how do we get rid of the 14? Subtract. Subtract, because it's a plus 14. Remember, when we add subtract, it's always what sign? Opposite sign. But when we divide, it's what sign? Same sign. Okay, subtract with me. When you add, subtract, same sign. Uh, opposite sign. Let me try that again. Opposite sign. Okay, let's, let me do this and I'll write it. So y minus 14, then bring this down, minus 1x. So let me write, add, subtract, opposite sign. Right? When we add, subtract, we always do the opposite sign. So when I subtracted, when I looked at that 14, that 14 was not multiplied by anything. So it's an add, subtract thing, which means opposite sign. Plus 14, minus 14, gone. Right? But now, now, what's in the middle, remember, the relationship between two things is what's in the middle between them. So what's in the middle between that minus 1 and that x? Nothing which means multiplication. These are times. That's not x take away 1. That's not this. That, that would be an adding relationship. That's different. It's a different animal. So everybody see that? Now that if it was this, this would be something in the middle adding, and I would, I would not divide, because that would not be times. Everybody see that? It's all about what's in the middle between two things, and if there's nothing in the middle, that's multiply, and you get rid of that by dividing. Right? So we always save the item that's right. So I'm saving the item right next to the x for last, and I do it by dividing. Now, how do I, what do I divide? Do I divide by plus 1 negative or one. minus 1? Negative. negative 1, huh? Because remember, whenever we divide, we divide by same sign, identical twin. That's the part I want to make sure you're really crystal clear on. And whatever you do to one side, you have no choice. And actually, I should divide both these. Let me be clear. Negative 1, negative 1. You divide everybody. Whenever you divide, you divide everybody. It's a big Y here. Let me slow down for a minute there. So everybody see what I'm doing? I'm dividing all three of them because you have to do equal treatment. Whenever you divide, everybody divides. Because if you're dividing this side by negative 1, you've got to divide the other side by negative 1. All the terms. Right? If they were equal before and you treat them the same, they'll be equal afterwards, right? It's all about equal, fair treatment, right? All the way across. Whenever we divide, we divide by the same sign, the identical twin. Whatever's right next to the x, we save that for last and divide by that identical twin. Everybody good to there? Does that make sense? Now, what happens here? What's y over negative 1? And then what's negative 14 over negative? Let's do them. There's two separate things to do there. Let's do the first one. First, there's y over negative 1. So that's a positive over a negative. So what's it going to be? Negative. Negative, negative right? Two negatives is negative, but one negative is just negative. Wait, I just said the wrong thing. Two negatives is positive. I'm just messing up there. Two negatives is positive, but this is not two negatives. This is only one negative. Now, this will be two negatives. So that will be plus 14, won't it? So we'll get negative y plus 14. Does that make sense? We all good on that? That's our answer. We're done. Why? Because X is alone. That's what he wanted. Nothing's on. Everybody good with that? So let me, let me recap one more time. So when you're going to get something alone, you save whatever's right next to it anyone for last. That, that always comes off last by dividing, right? First, you get rid of the other stuff, like the plus 14, by doing the opposite sign when you add subtract. And then you divide by this identical twin, same sign, all the way across. Positive over negative is negative. Negative over negative is positive. The ones went away because we never leave one to the bottom, do we? One at the bottom. Why does one at the bottom go away? Because it divides. You know what I mean? Like, you guys know, what is, eight, what is 8 divided by 2? 4. So what is 8 divided by 1? See, see why the 1 vanishes? 1 in the bottom, divided by 1, we, we don't leave that. Divided by 1 does nothing. So we get rid of 1s in the bottom. We never leave them. That's what I'm showing you with that example, right? Question. So, like, if we got x equals 14 minus x, is that a negative y? Yes, good question. So, what if, let me ask you guys, what if on the multiple choice test we take on Wednesday, 
There's like A, B. Here's the trick. Multiple choice can be nice and it can be a pain. What if, what if the first answer is 14 minus Y and then whatever, blah, 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 and then E is none of the above. What if A is 14 minus Y? Well, here, let, let me make it more interesting than that. That's not even interesting enough. What if A is 14 minus Y? And B is Y minus 14, and C is something crazy, and D is something crazy, and E is none of the above. So what do you think about that? How many, you guess some of you said, let's take a vote. How many say A? A lot of people say A. How many say B? Nobody likes B now. You're right, it's A. It's A, not B. You know how you know that it's A? What matters is not the order. The order doesn't matter at all. But signs in the front. That negative Y. What signs, so ask yourself, in my answer here, what signs in front of the Y? Negative. 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 So in this answer, what, in answer A, what signs in front of the Y? So it's right. What sign in my answer? What signs in front of the fourteen? In the answer, what signs in front of the fourteen? Nothing, which means that's the same answer. See how B not B has a negative in front of fourteen. So again, everybody hear my saying on that one? Order doesn't matter. Don't sweat the order. Who cares what order it's in? Signs in front are what matter. They can mix it up in any order they want, but as long as it has the same signs in front, it's the same answer. Does that make sense? Signs in front matter. Not order. Signs in front. All right. I think we've got... Class, um, I can talk to my counselor instead because I find this class too easy. Uh, you can do whatever you need to do. Yeah, is that okay? Um, like, or do I have to get permission from you? Can, can you talk to me after class? Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's, uh, let's try this one. N equals B minus M. Let's solve for M. So 4M. There's the wall. So give that a try. M is saying I want to be alone. So it should be similar to the last one. Okay, so M is saying, I want to be alone, so there's, there's a minus one next to the M, but we'll save that for last, huh? Remember the thing right next to the letter we saved for last, get rid of the other stuff first. What, what sign's in front of the B? Positive. Nothing was positive, which means positive, huh? Because with me, remember, signs are in front of who they're on. Okay, so the first thing is you got to get rid of that B, right? First thing is to get rid of that B. How do we get rid of that B? Subtract. Yeah, whenever we add subtract, it's opposite signs. So subtract B. Gonzo. Good for starters on that. So what do we get? N minus B. Good to there. And now, we got to finish getting M alone. <clears throat> That's going to be a divide, isn't it? Because the minus 1 is right up against the M. There's no symbol in the middle. So that means they, they're in a times relationship. And so that means we're going to divide. When you divide, divide, divide by the same sign or the opposite sign? Same. Same. Identical twin. Whenever you divide. All the way across. Gonzo. Right? The two, over here, the two negatives... Make positive regular M. Huh? Now what happens? You got here's two separate divisions. You got to do the signs, right? And so we have positive over negative. Right? This is positive over negative, so that's negative N. We don't. We never leave ones on the bottom. And then negative over negative, positive. Now is that is that the same as B minus N? Yes. Yes. Because the signs are the same. Sign in front of the N is negative. Sign in front of the N is negative. Sign in front of the B is positive. Sign in front of the B is positive. Nothing is positive. Either one. Either one. So on the multiple choice, grab either one of those. They're both right. They're both, I'll just say or. 
Math Excel will take either one. Math Excel is good with either answer. It knows they're both right. Is that okay? How many people got one of those answers? How are we doing? Did I go too fast? Did I race ahead of you? So not a lot, huh? So you want me to do some more of these? I just do that to know how fast or slow to go. Yes, sir, I have a question. question. So I probably missed it when I went out. Um, so I was looking at number nine. We did it earlier. And then number 11. Um, what's the difference between number I'll, I'll come by. I'll check what you got. Um, all right. So let's uh, let's go. Okay. So we got capital B is P T plus P solve for T. Okay. So let me let you try this one. So here's the wall. I think the wall might help you. Which which letter are we trying to get alone there? A lot of letters up there. C. T, yeah, you kind of kind of like keep your eye on the ball, so to speak. Here's the ball. T is saying, I want to be alone. Get rid of all this stuff with me. See what you can do. <laughs> what do you save for last? What do we always save to get rid of last? The thing right next to it. That one will go last. Get rid of this guy first, right? You with me? Get rid of the outside P first. Save the item right next to T for last. See what you can do with that. Okay, guys, so what's my first step then? Subtract P from both sides. Remember when we add subtract, it's opposite sign, huh? It's opposite sign. That gets rid of that. Y'all with me? So this will be B minus P equals PT. Good so far? See what happened? So remember, you, you get rid of the outer stuff first. You save the thing right next to your T for last. So now we're on the last step. T, here's the ball. Keep your eye on the ball. There's a lot of letters. You've got to remember which one you're trying to get alone. T is saying, I want to be alone. What do you do? Yeah, that's a divide step, isn't it? Because what's in the middle between P and T? Nothing, which means times, huh? When we divide, do I divide? Do I, is it negative P? No. no, it's identical twin when you divide. Same sign, same everything. Identical, right? And whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. Now, um, I'm doing this a little different. I just made it. Remember how on the last problem, I did like two separate divisions, the last couple problems? The reason I did that is because it was just a one. And I knew I was going to not leave it. But if, it's, if you're dividing by something other than one, just make it one big bar. You could make it two separate. That's right also. I don't want to confuse you with too many details right now. Just make it one big bar. We're done. Does that make sense? Everybody see what we did there? So I just made it one big bar. And then divided by the P. You cannot cancel these P's. I was just gonna yeah, it's a good question. It's because the minus sign and plus sign, they're kind of like glue. They like glue it together. You can't break that glue button. You can't take that P. We'll get into that later in chapter, I forget, six or something like that. We'll go crazy and I'll talk a lot about that. But for now, just leave it. Can't cancel. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, the T, that's why I keep saying, like, keep your eye on the ball. Yeah, the T is the one we're trying to get alone. Okay. So we get rid of everybody else, leave the T. Yeah, okay. exactly right. Yeah, that's why you got to remember which, because they could say solve for P. You know, they could say whatever they want. You got to remember which one they want. Which one they want. Is that good on that? So Y equals R plus S plus T, all over 4. So we have fractions. So what, let me give you the answer to that question. Whenever we have fractions, we get rid of them, pretty much. Well, well we have fractions with an equal sign. We <coughs> always get rid of the fractions. <coughs> so what's going to be the easiest way? Oh, actually, you know what? Let me make a suggestion on something new. What I would do on this one 
to make it easier. So I would just put this y over 1, and then you can just go diagonal, diagonal, and cross multiply. Have you ever seen that before? That's a little bit easier. So one more time. When you have, um, when, when, when you got that whole letter y, just put it over 1. You know, you can always put anything over 1. That's always legal, you know. And then you, what you have is one fraction on each side. When you just have two equal fractions, just one fraction on each side, you can go diagonal, diagonal, and cross multiply. We'll do that a lot throughout the semester. So what you'll get is 4y equals 1 times r plus s plus t. So everybody see what happened there? So I multiplied the 4 and the y. And wrote it here. And the 1 and that stuff. Now, 1 isn't going to change anything, is it? I mean, you could really just skip it if you want to. But I'll just show it. It's just going to be r plus s plus t. 1 times anything doesn't change anything. Right? We good to there so far? I diagonal, diagonal, cross multiply. That's what I did. I went diagonally and diagonally. Like that. And then I distribute the one. And now we're not done, but we, but we did get rid of fractions. It's much nicer, right? There's no fractions. That's why we do that. Okay, now what are we supposed to do? You, you can kind of lose your bearings. What are we even supposed to do on this problem? What does it say here? 4S. Four. Four S. S. Remember, got to keep your eye on the ball. It's coming up on baseball season. Keep your eye on the ball. So I'm saying to my, my how old is he now? 12-year-old boy. That's, that's baseball. Johnny, eye on the ball. So the same thing with the letters here. Eye on the ball. It's all about, because there's a million letters. They could have asked us to solve for any of them. Stay focused. S. Eye on the ball. S. They want S alone. So, what am I going to do? Minus T. And? R. Both of them. Yeah. Just get rid of You can get both at once. Minus R, minus T. Yeah. And whatever you do to one side? No choice. But to do the same thing to keep the balance. Bye, bye. S is alone. Right? See how that worked? Here's S. Bring it down. Well, what's the other side? You can write it any order you want. 4Y minus As long as you keep the correct signs. What's in front of the 4Y? Positive. So, yeah. <coughs> minus R minus... I'd probably write it that way. But if you wanted to put the 4Y at the back, you could, as long as it's a plus 4Y. Wherever it is. What's in front of that 4Y? A positive. Nothing. Or a positive sign. Wherever he says. Right? That makes sense. Again, the order doesn't matter. Signs in the front matter. Right? Yeah. Um, as far as um, being rid of the fractions of being the Y or the 1 under the Yeah. That'll always work when you have just one fraction on each side. Yeah, that's always the, I think, the easiest thing to do. We good there? So we got S alone. There's the answer. Okay. Okay, so T equals 4M plus 4V. And let me let, me let you give that one a try. Go ahead on that one. So M is right there, right? Keep your eye focused on what the ball there. M is saying, I want to be alone. So what do we do? So, so we're going to save the 4 right next to it for last. We save that for last. Don't worry about that right now. Start out here. Minus 4B. Minus 4B, because it's always opposite sign when we add subtract, huh? Exactly. So we'll do that first off. So minus 4V, whatever you do to one side, no choice. Do the same thing to the other to keep the balance. Then what do we have? We'll have... T minus 4V, and this is 4M. Good to there? Now, what's the, and the last step is always what? Divide. divide. It's always divide. It's divide by the identical twin. Same sign, same everything, huh, is the last step, always. So I'm going to divide by 4. Now, am I going to do two separate bars? No, I only do that for 1 because 1 just vanishes eventually, so I do it for 1. But I, other numbers, I just make one big bar, done. 
M's alone. There's the answer. Can I cancel those fours? No, it's illegal because the minus is like blue. Anyway, just leave it. You're good. We'll talk a lot about that later. Good there. Making sense? Getting easy. This is almost all the material for the exam Wednesday. All right, let's try this one. Capital D is J plus Q over 2. All right, try that one. So there we have fractions. Do just what we did last time with the fraction test. Right? Put the D over 1 and then the diagonal, diagonal, cross-multiply thing. All right, so what do you, you put the D over 1, right? And diagonal, diagonal, right? Cross multiply for fractions. So then we get 2D and then 1 times J plus Q. That, that, you can skip that one step if you want to. It's not going to do anything, huh? It's just going to be J plus Q, you know? Good to there. Now we're almost done. You've got to kind of remember which one the ball is, right? Keep focused on the ball. Who's the ball? Who do they want to see alone? Okay. The J. They said solve for the J. J. So here's the ball. J saying I want to be alone. So what do I do to get J alone? Subtract Q. Yeah, it's minus Q. Whatever you do to one side, no choice but do the same thing to the other. So there we go. These cancel. So 2D minus Q. The other is J. And we're done. Is that okay? How many got that one? How did we do on that one? Okay, that's a lot of you. Good. That's quite a few questions I can answer on that. All right. So. I okay, so let's try this one. P equals 4D over N. Another fraction, do the same thing. So I put the P over 1, diagonal, diagonal, right? And P is 1 times 4D. And 1 times 4D doesn't do anything. You can skip it if you want, huh? You good to there? And now, who's the ball? N. N. Solve for N. So N's over here. It's on the left side this time. Saying, I want to be alone. What's in the middle between the N and the P? Five. Five. Nothing's in the middle, so we divide, huh? It's times, so we... This is times here, so we divide. And we divide identical twins, same sign, same everything. So n's alone, it's 4d over p. We good to there? Is that good? You guys happy with this section? All right, I'm going to move on. All right, 2.5. Um, percentage word problem. Sounds like fun, huh? All right. So what I'm going to suggest on this one is direct translation. Let me just write it out a little bigger here. What percent of 200 is 50 is their question. I'm going to suggest the method of direct translation. Map Excel, if you click on the question help, you know, and show an example, they do a little different method. Their method's fine. I never care what method you do on the test, you know. But I've found it's easier for students over the years to just, they do like a fraction thing, to just directly translate. What do I mean? What percent? That's my X. That's, that's the thing I don't know. That's the what. Of. Does anybody know what of always becomes in math? Multiply. multiply. Of is always multiply. <clears throat> of 200. That means times 200. So see how I'm just directly translating so far. What percent X of 200 times 200 is, what does is always become in math? Equals. equals, right? If Johnny is 12, his age equals 12. Is is equals. And then 50. 
Just directly, just go word for word from English to math. Just go straight like that. I think that's the easiest thing. And then you get to here, and then it's about solving for x. So, so there's a little equation. Here's the wall of separation. X, like always, is saying, I want to be alone. So what do we do to get x alone there? Yeah, how do we get, uh, do we subtract the 200 or divide the 200? Divide. divide. It's times, so I divide. Oh. Always do the opposite. So I divide by 200. Whatever you do to one side, you have no choice but do the same thing to the other. And then just use your calculator. You totally use the calculator on the exam on Wednesday, right? No, no cell phones, but calculators. I have a calculator with you. 50 divided by 200. It'll come out point, 0 0.25, doesn't it? Like that? Okay, now that's almost the answer. The only thing that's left it to do is it actually said what percent. Yeah, so it, wa it doesn't want a decimal answer. It wants a percent answer, huh? So how do you turn that into percent? 25%, right? You know how it moves two places? That's why there's two zeros in the percent symbol. It's reminding you two places of movement, right? That decimal goes one, two when you put the percent. It's like a magnet. It pulls a little piece of metal. Two places. So there's our answer. So the decimal's really here now, isn't it? You don't need to put it on there, it's, but it's, that's where it's at. Good. Just direct translation. Now, this is going to be on exam two. This is exam two stuff. Okay, so what is 65 percent of 520? 65% of, so, so try direct translation again. Just go word for word. So the what? That's the x. Equal. Is equals. 65% now. We always have to change. When we use a percentage in a formula, we want the decimal, huh? So how do you change 65% to a decimal? Yeah, it goes back two places, huh? 0. 0.65? We good? Of times 520. See how that's just direct translation? Word for word. Now... Do we need to get X alone, or is it already alone? Yeah, it's already alone. There's nothing to do but hit the buttons on your calculator. And tell me what that answer is. 280 or something. I'm guessing. 290. 338? Oh, I'm off a bit. All right. There it is. We good there? Okay, so just direct translation. I think this will be easy for you. So let's try this one. So 11% of what number is 0 0.3? So try that one with direct translation. This is easy for you. I'd encourage you to bring your phones or your laptops or whatever, and you can get your, you can get your math mix out homework done while we're going. <coughs> it's going to get harder. That first test is supposed to be, it's supposed to be easy. So I want to I want to encourage you and not overly encourage you. You know, don't get too cocky. It gets a lot harder later. That first chapter is supposed to be, really, it's supposed to be stuff you already knew. It's really, I could have just handed you exam one. You're supposed to know, but I know I wanted to review with you first. So it's going to pick up, but, but for now it should be easy, I would think. And so bring, bring your technology and get, get your homework done right here in class. 11%, move the decimal back two places, 0.11 of times what number x is equals 
0 0.3. Good? Here's the wall. Equal sign. X is saying, I want to be alone. Is X already alone, or do I have to do something to get it alone? I got to divide, huh? I got to do something. I got to divide, right? So divide by 0.11. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. X is alone. Calculate. Now, it's going to be something messy, isn't it? What is it? 2.73. It goes on and on. Does it go on and on? Yeah, so we're just going to round to the nearest tenth. Now, do you guys remember the, the places? The first one after the decimal is the tenth place. The next one is the hundredths, etc. So they said round to the tenth, if you look up there. Tenth, so that means this place. So you circle the place you're supposed to stop in, and then you look one to the right of that. If the one to the right of that is five or more, you go up. If it's, you know, four or less, you leave it, right? So it's just 2.7. If that was 2.75 or 6, I'd go up to 2.8, wouldn't I? It'd be close, right? Because $2.73 is closer to 270 than it is to 280, right? That's what we basically did. Good on that. What's that? We good? Question? Oh, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a few more. Yeah. Okay. So 14 is 30% of what number? So try that one with direct translation. So 14 is, what do I do with 30%? Decimal, two places back, 0.30. We good. Of times what number? X. Good to there for the direct translation so far. Here's the wall. The equal sign is the wall of separation. X is saying what it's always saying. I want to be alone. So what do I do to get X alone? Divide. Right, going to divide by the point thirty. Whatever you do to one side, do the same thing to the other to keep the balance. Hit the buttons on your calculator, and what you got? Oh, just six is on and on. Yeah, Type an integer or a mixed number. That's weird. Look what they're saying there, guys. They're saying type an integer or a mixed number. How weird. They want, so they want a mixed number answer. I've never, I didn't, I didn't know they did that. Okay, so let me help you with that. So we have the answer 46 and then 6 is forever, right? Now, if you have the Casio natural display, you can just like hit the buttons, SD, that SD button. It'll rotate between various forms of the answer. It'll show you the fraction, the decimal, the mixed number. Just keep hitting SD. The SD button's in the middle right. Just keep hitting SD. It'll just go through all the different versions automatically. But if you don't have that nice calculator, then let me show you. Do you remember, uh, rather than show you like formal methods, I think it would be easier for you if I just reminded you. Do you remember what point threes forever is? Yeah, do you guys know that's one third? Have you seen that before? Point three, like 33 percent, that's one third, right? Yeah, th point threes forever. So think about, think with me logically for a second. If point threes forever is one-third, which it is. What are point sixes forever? It's got to be twice as big, right? Six is twice as big as three, right? So six is forever, point six is forever, is twice as big as point three is forever. Twice as much, right? You with me? So if point three is forever is one-third of the pi, six, point six is forever being twice as much, what's twice as much as one-third of the pi? Two-thirds of the pot. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, so when you see .6 is forever, so this, this part, now 46 is just 46. Just leave that be. But when you see the .6 is forever, that's just two-thirds. There's our answer. 46 and two-thirds. Does it do it for you automatically? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, some of the, some of the calculators do it. Does it make sense how I did that? So .3 is forever. Just recognize that's one-third. .6 is forever. is twice as big as two-thirds. You can put that in a 3 by 5 You get a 3 by 5 card. Oh, yeah. Let me write that up. You guys get a 3 by 5 card for the test tomorrow. No, Wednesday. 
right? Three, have I mentioned that before? No. Oh, wow, this is big news. <laughs> the test wins. Yeah, every exam, you can have a three by five card. Three by five card. Write anything you want on both sides of the three by five card. So formulas you might need, or point threes forever is one third, or you know, whatever, example problems, whatever you want to put on there. Both sides of a three by five card. Obviously during the exam. Best way to do that is just make that as your study for the test. You go over the practice exam today and tomorrow. Right? As you, anything you need is your book, because that practice exam has everything that will be on the real exam. So as you're doing that thing, anything you need, put it on the 3x5 card. Questions on this one or what I'm talking about with exams? Yeah. Um, do you think the exam will even have it as an integer or a fraction, or you'll have it as a one? The exam will be multiple choice. Okay. So all, if you have this, for example, you would just have to recognize that's the same one and grab that bubble, mm -hmm. bubble that option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. So it'll be multiple choice. So I won't make you write it any certain way. It's just multiple choice. You just grab the one that's the same. Okay. Okay, so it's saying, um, so Burger Cove here is 19% notice. They're asking me Burger Cove. So give me this pie chart, circle graph. They're saying Burger Cove's 19%. The total is $36 billion. 36 billion is the total, right? So, do you guys know how to do percentages and totals and that kind of thing? Like, what if I say, okay, there's about, what's there in here? About 40 of us, maybe there's 45 of us. Um, if I said, hey, 20% uh, of this class is going to get an A in the end. How many, how would you figure out how many people? If I said 20% of our class, 20% of the 45 people are going to get an A. I bet, at the end of the semester. How would you figure out exactly how many people that is? What do you do when you say that? Well, what is of always? We just talked about that's times. Of 45 is times. What do you do with a percentage? 0.20. So it's 0.20 times 45, right? And that would be, I think it's nine people, isn't it? Nine people. So percentages are always part of a whole. Another way, another way you could put that, well, yeah, let's just, let's just leave it at that. So you take the percentage... What, notice what that is. That's percentage times total, right? Whenever it says 20% of the 45 people, that's 0.20 times 45 people. gives you the nine people that will probably get A's at the end of the semester. So same thing here. Percentage times total, right? 19%, 0.19, make it a decimal, times, what's the total? 36 billion. Hit the buttons on your calculator. Just 0.19 times 36, because that's the percentage in decimal form times the total. Somebody got that number? 6.84. So it's, oh wait, 84, not 48, huh? They're, food, they're being tricky there. 6.84. So there it is. That makes sense? So if they give you percentage, just go times the total. Because it's percentage of the total. Of means times. All right. Okay, so, yeah, they're saying 43.7% um, of shots made. Right? Of his, the shots he made. He made... 286. And they're asking me how many he attempted. Now, guys, here's, here's my question. Should I, well, what should I do with 43.7% to change it to a decimal? Back two places, 0.437. We good? That's what we always do when we change from percentage to decimal. Right? So we go back two places. Of times. Now, do I want to go times 286? No. Remember what we talked about. It's percent times total. Is 286 the total number of shots he tried? No. Yeah. 
No, yeah, the 286 doesn't go there. Whoops. 286 goes over here, and this is the X, the total attempted. Does everybody see the trick there? He tried more than 286 shots, right? He tried, I don't know, over 500 shots, 600 shots, something like that. He tried five or 600 shots. So 43%, 43.7% of the total shots he tried were baskets for the 286 he made. Do you see that trick? They're tricking you. That 286 is not the total. It's, it's just the amount he made. It's not the total he attempted. And they're asking me for how many he attempted. So remember, the main idea is percent times total equals, I don't know what you want to call it, the, the number made. That's the idea of the formula. Percent times total equals the number made. So percent times total is the number made. Right? Okay, so that's an equation. X is saying, I want to be alone. X is not already alone. We have to get it alone. So what are we going to do? Divide by 0.437. Yeah, we got to divide by 0.437. What is it? 657? They say round to the nearest integer. 657 point? 0.54? Okay. Wait, what was it? 654.46? Oh, okay. 654.46, like that. So we just round to 654, right? They, they say round to the nearest whole number. So we just round to 0.654. Are we good on that? Does that make sense? They're being more tricky. All right. Okay, so they're being a little more tricky here. 17% tip of 561 on a meal. What was the cost of the meal before the tip? All right. Yeah, this is a little tricky. Let me, let me write a formula. I think there's a formula I could write out that will help you in all these situations. All right, so 312-inch board cut into two pieces. One piece is five times the other. Find the length of the two pieces. So here we go with word problems. So these are, these are more real word problems. We have to actually read the words now. You know, none of like those other ones where I said, ah, blah, 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 plug in the number. No, no, the blah, blah, blah matters this time. In this section, you've got to pay attention to the words. Okay, so let me help out. Basically, what they're going to do in these problems is they're going to have one part that's X, another part that's a, an X formula, and they're going to add up to a total often. Not 100% not always, but a lot of times, this will be the setup. Everybody see what I'm saying? There'll be a plain X, Adding to an X formula equals like a total. And that's what we're talking about here. We have a board. They're talking about a big old long board. And the board is 312 inches. So the whole board is 312 inches long, the whole thing. So that's the total, right? Total length of board. And X, I'm not even going to think hard. There's always a simple X. Just pop it in there. Plus, all I need now is my X formula. What might be the X formula? Well, that comes from the words. Five times. The other piece is five times as long. Five times. Five times. Five X, huh? Does that make sense? What they're saying is one part of the board is X. The other part of the board is five X. Much longer. There's one section that's X, one section that's five times that long, and the whole thing is 312. So the X part plus the 5x part makes the whole 312. Is that good? So it's going to be that format always. A plain x, an x formula, and a total. Well, almost always. Now, here's the equal sign. x is saying I won't be alone. Can you solve that? How do you solve that? You combine the like terms. Good. Combine like terms, huh? What is x plus 5x? 
Yeah, because it's really a 1, huh? So it's 6x, yeah. And then what do you do? What's the last step of getting x alone, almost always? Divide. Divide by the 6. Calculator, 52. x is 52. They're going to ask you for the, over here it says shorter piece, and then they're going to also ask you for the longer. So the shorter is the 52, the answer we got for x. How do you find the longer? Five. You can subtract from 312, or you can just go 5 times x, because that's the other piece, right? The pieces are x and 5x. The other one is 5 times that. Yeah, or subtract. You're right. What's that, 260? So 260 is the longer. So let me hold up there for a minute. So that was like a real word problem. You see what we did? So one more time. The original setup on these real word problems is going to be simple x plus x formula is total. So that was simple x and 5x. How did I come up with that? They said 5 times. 5 times x equals the 312 total. Like terms, combine 6x, divide by 6, x is 52. When you get your x answer, that's often not the whole story. That's part of the story. That's one of the answers. But the other one, they're going to ask, what's the longer piece? So the two pieces are x and 5x. So x is 52. The longer piece is 5 times that, right? That's the other piece. 5 times 52, 260. Questions I can answer? Okay, so we got this dog race thing. 1049 uh, miles from Anchorage all the way to Nome. This is a long dog sled race. It's a thousand... 49 miles. Whoops, I'm writing over the words here. It's 1,049 miles. And it says, the musher is twice as far from Anchorage as from Nome. So the musher's like here or something, right? Twice as far from Anchorage, right? He's further away from Anchorage. He's closer to Nome. Oh. Good. So, anyway, you don't have to draw the whole picture. It might help, but you don't have to. What am I going to do for my formula? What did I say that is pretty much the typical way? Plain x plus x formula. You're right. It's going to be 2x equals total, huh? So, plain x. Yeah, what's my x formula? What did they say? Twice. 2x. You're right. This is 2x, and this is x, basically, huh? Equals, and what's the total? 1049. See how it's the same as the board problem that we just did? Same kind of thing? So x and 2x? Yeah, 3x. Because this is really 1x and 2x. How do you solve for x? Divide by 3. x is some number I don't know. 39? Three, oh, 349. Yeah, I'm, I'm way too small. 349. And, um, okay, now, is that, you got to be careful on a word problem. Yeah. Good job, good job. Yeah, you got to stay in reality when you're doing a word problem. Let me write this again, 349. It's easy, you know, you get done with the word problem, you say, okay, hey, boom, there it is, X, 349, type it in, but no, careful. The answer to a word problem may or may not be X. It's not always X. So uh, let's go up here and just look and say, what, what do they really want from me? The musher has completed how many miles? Of, well, the musher started here. How far he went. The musher's here now. The X is 349. X is 349. Right? So that means this is 349. But, but, but the musher has done all of it. He's done more than half. So you can subtract. That's one good way. You can take 1049 minus 349. Or you could just go 2 times x, because 2 times x is what he's completed, right? It's that first part. 2 times x. I'm just going to go 2 times x. 2 times the 349. So you give you the same answer either way. That's just under 700. 698? 698 is what he's completed. We good with that? So the end of a word problem, you've got to be careful. See how these take a little bit of time? You've got you to practice these. Yeah. Or you could subtract... I'll say, or you could just take 1049 minus 349, and that'll be the same answer. 
six ninety eight. What's that? What am I doing wrong? Is it seven hundred? You got seven hundred too. Oh, is this answer right? Oh, it's a decimal. Round is all, so it should have come out 350 when we round. Oh, that's it. Thanks, guys. Yeah. So then, then this would be 2 times 350. This would be 700. Thank you. And when you subtract, you do get 700. You're right. Yeah, it's the decimal rounding thing. This was 349.6, so it rounded to 350. Thank you. We good? Now we're good? So it was all about rounding. So I didn't round. 349.6, so it should have rounded to 350. So it is right to take 2 times 350, 700, or subtract 700. 700 is the answer, by subtraction or by taking 2 times up. So if you open up a book, so think about it. So they're saying you got a book. So what, what if you open up a book, guys? If you open up a book, and this is page 83, what's the page right next to it? 84 or 82, depending which way. Huh? Yeah, It's one higher or lower, right? Facing pages in a book. See what they're saying? You open up a book, facing pages of a book. That's just fancy talk to say the other one's one higher or one lower. That's all it is. You get that? Whenever, that's just a fancy way for them. If you open up a book and you're looking at facing pages, one of them is one more than the other, huh? That's what it means to be pages that are facing each other, pages that are next to each other. The page number is one higher. That's just, they're just trying to be tricky there, and they're saying one of them is one higher. So what do we do? It says the sum. What does sum mean? Yeah, one, remember my formula. X plus some kind of X formula, I'll come back to that, is 73. Remember me telling you how these are almost always going to go? Plain X plus X formula is total, right? Total is the sum. It's, it's what they sum out to be. Sum means add. It's what they add to be, huh? So what's the X formula? Well, first off, you're good with the setup, right? It's almost always this way. So just write that down right away on a word problem. X plus X formula is total. And then go, okay, I just need the X formula now. Remember what I said? Facing pages is one, it's a fancy way of saying one more. Right? If something's a facing page, it's one more, one higher. So what's the formula for one higher than x? x plus 1. Now, and notice we, all, we have two x's. We always have two x's. Have you noticed that? Not one. The common mistake that people make is they'll, they'll leave this out and they'll only have just x plus 1. Don't, don't make that mistake. Remember, I'm giving you the setup. There's always a plain x and then an x formula, which we'll use x again. There's always two x's involved. One, the plain x, the other in the x formula, and then the total. Does that make sense? So, so there's some page number, and then a page number one higher than it, so x plus 1, and they add up to be 73. Does that make sense? So, how do we solve this? What's x plus x? 2x. Good so far? All right, how do I x in? I want to be alone. What do I do to get x alone? Yeah, get rid of the minus 1 first off. So that's gone. 2x is 72. Last step is always divide. x is 36. So the pages are 36 and 37, aren't they? Is that good? You might have been able to guess at that one. So is that good? So it's x and x plus 1. That's what it means to be a facing page. It's, it's a fancy way of them saying one more, one higher, right? Because the facing page is one higher. So it's x plus 1. Okay. Okay, so here we go. They're saying consecutive. Do you guys know what consecutive means? In a row, one after the other. In a row. So whenever they say consecutive, it means in a row. That would be numbers like 10, 11, 12, 
or 27, 28, 29. Those are consecutive numbers. Numbers that come right after each other. You know. Those are consecutive numbers. So when they say blah, 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 Edna, Ellie, and Elsa are consecutive numbers, integers, numbers. That means their ages are like in a row, like 10, 11, 12, or 27, 28, 29. That's what their ages are like. Okay. So what? Well, the first one, here we go with the formula. We're going to add up the first person, the second person. In this case, there's three people. There's not just two parts of the board or two somethings. There's three people. We're going to add them all up to equal the total. What's the total? 120. And now, the million-dollar question, what are the other two formulas? If the first one is, call it x, the next one is how much higher? x plus 1. It's 1 higher. And the one after that is x plus 2. Does everybody see that? That's what it means to be consecutive. So when they say consecutive, you think, oh, x, x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3, x plus 4, however many they tell you. They say there's three of them here. So I just do x, x plus 1, x plus 2. Add up to be the total. So that's what consecutive means. It just goes up by 1 every time, right? So the first formula is plain x, always, every word problem. First formula is plain x. And then go up by 1, x plus 1, go up by 2, x plus 2. They all add up to be 120. Can we solve that for x? x plus x plus x, like terms? 3x. Right, we get to there. Plus 1 and 2. 3. Good to there. X plus X plus X is 3X. 1 and 2 is 3. X is saying I want to be alone. Subtract the 3. Those are gone. 3X three is 117. Last step. Divide by 3. X is something I don't know. 39? 30. Okay. 39. Yeah, so the ages are 39, 40, and 41 because they're three in a row, right? That was a little trickier, huh? So you good with that? Consecutive means in a row. You always start with X in every word problem. X plus 1, X plus 2, add them up. All right. Okay, so 3 consecutive odd is 207. The trick is the word odd. This would be like 17, 19, 21. If they're odd consecutive, so they're not just saying consecutive anymore. The last problem, they just said consecutive. So that just means it goes up by one every time. But if they say odd consecutive, that's like 17, 19, 21. How, and the first one's always X, right? How much are they going up by every time? Two. By two. That's two higher and then two more higher, etc. Does that make sense? For consecutive odd, it goes up by two every time. If they just say consecutive, that just goes up by one every time. They can say consecutive odd. And by the way, if they say, let me just add even to the list. If they say odd or even, it goes up by two every time. Think about even numbers. 12, 14, 16. See how they go up by two also? Odd or even, either way, is a jump of two every time, isn't it? So, all right, so what? Well, then it's x plus x plus 2, plus x plus 4. You add up the three formulas to equal 207, the total. Is that good? Can we solve that? x and x and x. 3x. 2 and 4. x is saying I want to be alone. So what do we do? Subtract 6. Subtract 6. Right. We've done this a couple times now. 2 and 1 divided by 3, it's something. 67. So it's 67, 69, 71, huh? Make sense? Odd or even goes up by 2 every time. So you can tell, I didn't need to convince you that the material gets harder. It's clearly more challenging right here. All right, basketball court. Perimeter of a basketball court. 
You've got to know the formula for perimeter. This is a specialized formula. Does anybody know it? What's the perimeter of a rectangle? It's two lengths plus two widths, yeah. Yeah. We'll do area formula later. That's L times W. We'll do some of that later. But perimeter, that's because a, a rectangle, you know, it's got, a, it's got a width, a width, a length, and a length, you know, to go all the way around it. Perimeter just means all the way around, huh? So if you wanted to add up length and width and length and width, you'd end up adding two lengths and two widths, wouldn't you? That's where that formula comes from. Okay, now, I'm not going to use L and W and all this stuff. I want to use X, right? So let's, let's make this work. So what does it say the perimeter is? 96. So that's my P. That's my perimeter. And what am I always going to do? I'm going to have one of these guys be a plane X. So I'm just going to let the first letter, I mean, other than the printer 96, but the first letter over here be plane X. And then I'm going to let the other letter be some kind of X formula, even though originally it was L and W. Are you tracking this? So this is, I, I'm trying to really make this drug clear because I know word problems are hard for people. So I want to give you kind of like a one-size-fits-all game plan. Every time, have you noticed that it comes down to plain X and X formula? Eventually. I always eventually get there where I'm using one of the players in the game to be a plain X and the other player to be some kind of X formula, or a couple of them. It was consecutive with X, X plus 1, X plus 2. It was odd, it was X. X plus 2, X plus 4, right? Because 1 up by 2 every time. Right? But if you notice the pattern, it's always a plain X and then some kind of other X formulas, right? Add it up to be a total. And that's what we have here. It adds up to be 96, the total. Okay, so the question is, what's the other X formula? What's that W? What's the other X formula? 2X plus 2. Yeah, what does it say? The length is 6 meters Longer than twice. Good, good thinking. That, that's tough words. Six longer than twice. That's six added to 2x. Yeah. That's the other formula. Six longer than twice. That's tough. Did you see that? Why don't we stop there? We're going to need to do this next time and... And um, we got to click, though. We got to do our click thing here. <laughs>